of grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. In 2010, Seth Pollock, a psychology professor from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, conducted a research study with 61 girls, aged 7 to 12. At the beginning of the study, Pollock took a saliva sample from each of the girls. Then he asked them to either give a speech or do math problems in front of an audience. In other words, he purposefully stressed them out. Well, after the girls did their stressful tasks, he divided them up into three groups. Those in the first group were reunited with their mothers for 15 minutes for hugs and reassurance. The second group got to talk to their moms on the phone for 15 minutes. And the last group watched a neutral movie for 15 minutes. What do you think happened to their stress levels? Well, after taking a second saliva sample, Pollock and his team discovered that the stress hormone cortisol started dropping almost immediately for the girls in the first two groups. And their level was basically back to normal within half an hour. But the girls in the third group still had a high stress level. Also, the girls in the first two groups had increased levels of oxytocin the hormone associated with trust and relationship building and love. Sometimes it's called the cuddle chemical. Those who didn't get to talk to their mothers didn't see any increase in oxytocin. So basically, talking with mom after a stressful event helps you feel better. Right, many of us know that already. But what this study also showed was that even if you can't see mom in person and get hugs from her, hearing her voice on the phone can have the same effect. When you're having a rough day, how many of you call mom? Jesus said, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. In today's gospel reading, Jesus uses this metaphor about shepherds and sheep. And it kind of sounds like that study about the girls and their mothers. Right? There is something soothing about hearing the voice of a loving mother. She knows you and you know her. And honestly, that's probably a better metaphor for us today than shepherds and sheep. Because most of us don't have much experience with sheep. The closest we come to sheep is, what, seeing one at the fair, wearing clothes made out of wool, eating lamb, Right, that's about it. But we've got plenty of experience of the relationship between children and parents. Just as sheep recognize the voice of their shepherd, so too do kids recognize and respond to the voice of their mothers. But there's a problem. Jesus is talking about him and us. And it would be great if we responded to Jesus the way a sheep sheep responded to a shepherd. Or the way a child responds to a mother. But sometimes we don't. Probably because we don't hear an actual auditory voice in our ears. I mean, shepherds have an actual voice. Mothers have an actual voice. Jesus had an actual voice, which his original disciples got to hear, but we don't get to hear it today. Hearing an actual voice triggers something involuntary in your brain. 
That's why the girls in that study who got to talk with their moms dropped their levels of cortisol and raised their levels of oxytocin. It was a chemical reaction in their brains upon hearing mom's voice. But when it comes to Jesus, we have to listen to him through other means. And that makes it a little trickier. Especially when we have plenty of other voices in our world that we can actually hear. Jesus talked about these as the voices of strangers. He said that sheep will not follow a stranger, but they will run from a stranger because they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, running away from strangers sounds great, but I'm not so sure it's that easy. For example, think of advertising. Like TV commercials, you can't skip on a streaming service. Annoying ads on YouTube. Targeted ads on social media. How many ads do you think you're exposed to every day? You want to take a guess? Jensen? 70? Well, according to Zipia, a career counseling organization, the average American is exposed to way more than 70. Try more like 4,000 to 10,000 ads a day. A day. That works out to about an ad every 8 to 21 seconds. That's a lot of ads. And all of them are trying to get you to buy stuff you probably don't need anyway. It is no wonder then why it's hard for us to hear the voice of Jesus sometimes. There are so many other voices around us. So many other things that compete for our attention and our response. But. Think of it this way. The only reason these other voices call out to you is because they know you're important. Advertisers know you're important because you have money that can buy their products. Thieves and bandits try to steal sheep because they know sheep are valuable. I mean, back then, sheep were just part of the economy. Stealing somebody's sheep might be like, what, stealing somebody's car today. You're not supposed to do it, but some people do because they know the thing is worth some money. But Jesus, the good shepherd, wants you Not because you're worth some money or because you can buy his product, but because he loves you. Think about that story of the shepherd who leaves the 99 to find the one. No shepherd in their right mind would do that. You would cut your losses and move on. But when you're that one sheep and Jesus comes to find you, that's amazing. Right? It's like parenting. Loving parents will do anything they can to keep their kids safe. Jesus does the same thing for us. But how does that work? What does that really look like? Right? How can we hear Jesus calling us today? Well, in his book, The Shepherd Trilogy, Philip Keller, who is an actual shepherd by trade, reflects on this passage from John 10. 
And he reminds us that God can speak to us through many different ways. He says things like scripture and devotions, sermons, radio, TV, a godly friend, a book you read, a deep inner conviction, the creation around us, and so much more. In Lutheran theology, we call this the Word of God. Jesus himself is the primary Word of God, but anything else that points to him can be seen like a secondary Word of God. Right? Yes, the Bible is often called the Word of God, but we don't worship the Bible. We worship Jesus, to whom the Bible points. I saw a thing online once that said, you can't hear Jesus call you if your Bible is closed. It's like expecting to get a phone call when your phone is turned off. That makes sense, right? Word of God can also be things like music, or art, or creative writing, or whatever it is. If it points us to Christ then it can be word of God. And all of that helps us hear him when he calls us. These things can give him entry into the sheepfold of our lives, so to speak. Well, Keller then goes on to say this. If in actual fact, Christ the good shepherd has been granted entry into the little fold of my life, then I will have started to become familiar with his voice. This then implies that I do recognize his voice. I learn to distinguish it from the many other voices calling to me amid a confused society and complex world. I come to that awareness where I am alert and attuned to the special attributes of Christ's call to me personally. The instant sheep hear and recognize their shepherd's voice, they lift their heads, turn their heads in the direction from which the sound comes, and cock their ears to catch every syllable. Whether resting, feeding, or fighting, everything else is forgotten in the moment because they have heard their owner's call. It commands their full and undivided attention. Something new and different is about to happen. Think again about those stressed out girls who got to hear mom's voice. Hearing her voice made a difference for them because they had heard that voice before. They knew who it belonged to. They were already in a relationship with her, so they knew her voice. When we're in a relationship with Jesus, then we learn to recognize his voice, too. So in a way, it doesn't really matter that we can't hear an actual auditory voice like the disciples did. That does not stop Jesus from speaking to us today. And it doesn't mean that we can't still listen to it. Plus, when we do listen to him, we find out that not only does he give reassuring words, but he also calls us to a new life. Right? When shepherds call their sheep to follow them, it's because they're leading them to a new place. A place that will give this flock a new life. And yes, all of the advertising you hear likes to promise you a new and wonderful life. But none of those products have ever laid down their lives for you. None of them have your best interest at heart. None of them want to give you life. They just want your money. But Jesus... The good shepherd loves you. 
he knows you by name. And not in some targeted advertisement kind of way, but because he has a real relationship with you. He knows every part of you. And he loves you like crazy. Even more than mom does. So when other people don't know your name or don't seem to care about you, Jesus still does. Even when you feel stressed out by doing math problems or giving a speech or doing some other thing in life, Jesus is still right there by your side. And even when you're afraid of all the thieves and bandits who seem to be closing in on you, Jesus still remains your good shepherd. No other voice can give you the same promises, protections, and provisions that he does. It is no wonder then why his voice is the only one worth our attention and response. He truly is our good shepherd. In the name of the one who calls us and leads us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.